Want to know the biggest reason people tend to fail with the Dave Ramsey baby steps? It's not lack of motivation because it's a great process. And it's not even the plan itself. It's the execution of trying to manage it all manually. Think about it. You're juggling emergency fund transfers, debt snowball payments, mortgage payments, retirement contributions, college savings, you name it. It's like having a second job just managing your money. But what if I could help you automate the entire system? Every single baby step running on autopilot while you focus on living your life. Well, that's exactly what I did and boy, does it work. So I'm gonna show you how to do it exactly. We're gonna show you how to automate your $1,000 emergency fund so it builds itself without you having to think about it. The set it and forget it system for crushing your debt. The exact automations I use to handle the retirement contributions, mortgage payments, and even our giving. No more forgetting about due dates, no more manual transfers, no more stress about whether you're staying on track with the baby steps. Now, if you're feeling a bit lost and have never heard of Dave Ramsey's seven baby steps, I'm gonna give you the quick 30 second rundown. So throw on the 30 second timer and let's go. The baby steps were made by Dave Ramsey as a financial roadmap designed to help normal people eliminate debt and build long-term wealth one step at a time. Baby step one is simple. It's just save $1,000 for your starter emergency fund. After that, you move to baby step two, and that's about paying off all of your debts, except for your house, using his debt snowball method. Step three is about saving three to six months of living expenses, so a larger emergency fund. Then it's step four. That's where you invest 15% of your income for retirement. Baby step five is about saving for your children's college. Step six is where you pay off your home early. And finally, baby step seven is about building your wealth and giving generously. Simple, right? But here's the thing, simple doesn't always mean easy. And that's exactly why so many people struggle with staying consistent. Life gets in the way. Kids get sick, you have a crazy week at work, or you're just plain exhausted. Now, you might have forgotten to move money to your emergency fund and missing the best day to pay off your debt. So that's why I decided to fully automate it using the financial automation tool we created called Sequence. Sequence is like Zapier, but for your finances. And by the way, we have a special 20% off coupon just for you. It's in the description below. Now, let's start with baby step number one. Save $1,000 for your starter emergency fund. Here you can see I've already synced the accounts that we have. Three credit cards, a checking account, a personal savings, and a Roth IRA. And we've also added the income source for our money to come into the system. Now, the first step, all we need to do, if you don't already have an emergency fund account, you can simply create an account with just a few clicks. I'm gonna create a pod, which is just an additional sub account, and we're gonna call this baby step one. This is the 1K emergency fund. We're gonna create that pod. And just like that, we have an account set up for us. And if we click on it, we can see everything through ThreadBank, the beneficiary name, the routing number, account number. It's even got a virtual debit card. Not that you should be using your virtual debit card with your emergency fund, but it's there when you need it. And now we just need to set up the rule. So I simply click and drag and I get this option. I can create all of my smart rules using a few different options. I can trigger it by incoming funds or I can trigger it by date. In this case, most people are paid bi-weekly. So let's just do this every single time that you're getting paid. So trigger by incoming funds. And now we get to make our smart rules. And then the first option, I have a number of different pieces that I can choose from. I can transfer a fixed amount every single time. I can transfer a percentage. I can round down my income. I can use an API, but that's not for most people or my personal favorite for emergency funds is top up. And what that means is that I just need to define what I want this account to build up to. And in this case, it's a thousand dollar emergency fund. So we're going to do a thousand dollars, but you might be saying, well, I can't afford to put a thousand dollars right away into a fund. The very next time I get paid, I've got bills to pay. So that's the great piece. We've got this limit tool right here. And what you can do is you can limit the amount of money that goes into it each time. So in this case, we can limit it to $100 per transfer, which would be every other week if we're getting paid bi-weekly. We can do it weekly, we can do it monthly or even year. So in this case, let's just limit it to $100 per transfer. So that will allow us to expect $200 per month if we're getting paid bi-weekly. When I click save, simple as that, that's done. Now, the key piece is that's just our emergency fund, but what we need to do is make sure the rest of the money is going to our checking account so that we can continue to pay our bills. So let me click back on that rule. I'll add another rule and we're gonna transfer the remaining funds, 100% of them, to our personal checking account. And just like that, we have it set up. 
So now, every single time we get paid, it'll look at the emergency fund. If it has less than $1,000, it'll transfer up to $100 into that account until it's full. Everything else will be going to our personal checking account. Now that we're done with rule one, let's take a look at rule number two. And rule number two, if you forgot, is about paying off all of your debts, except for the house. So here's how you do it. All I need to do is create another pod, which again, is just another bank account. And we're gonna call this baby step two, debt payoff. And what's great about this is now that I have a central depository account that can run a snowball debt payment method to all of my debts. And let me show you exactly how that works. So in this case, we'll pretend that baby step number one is all completed. So we have a couple different options. We can keep the rule here because remember, once it already has a thousand dollars, it won't put any more money into it. You also have the option to delete it if you want to, but in this case, let's just leave it there. Now what I can do is I can add another rule. And in this case, let's take a look at transferring a fixed amount. So at this point in time, you've gone through your budget and you know how much money you can set aside to pay off your debts. And that's the great piece about it. And so I'm gonna transfer a fixed amount of $500 every single time we get paid into baby step number two. Now, if I leave it like this, what's gonna happen is it's gonna go through the rules in order. It's gonna to top up our emergency fund, but we already have $1,000 in it. So that rule's not gonna happen. But in this case, it's gonna transfer 100% to our checking and there's gonna be nothing left over for our debt payoff. All I simply need to do is drag this up top and now it will transfer $500 into our debt payoff bucket before transferring everything else back into our checking account. So let's click save and now we're done with that piece. The next step is where we drag a rule from our debt payoff down to one of our debts. And in this case, we can trigger it either by incoming funds or most likely by date because all of our credit cards for the most part are paid on a monthly basis. Same with car payments, whatever debt you have is typically paid once a month. So now I need to pick a trigger schedule and I'm gonna say monthly. And in this case, let's just pretend that everything's due on the first of the month. Now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our actions and as you can see, we've already built in the snowball method into sequence. So I'm gonna click on that and here's what I need to do. I'm gonna take 100% of the balance because that's gonna be $500 and right now it's just going to the Bank of America. But all I need to do is click on add account and it's gonna automatically find all of my other liability or debt accounts. And in this case, I only have three. So it's gonna take 100% of all of the money that's put into this debt payoff and take a look at what it's gonna do. This action is gonna take 100% of all of the money there, or in this case, it'll be $500 every single time we get paid, which is $1,000 a month. And it's gonna automatically find the minimum amount due on each of those three debts or as many debts as you have. And then it's gonna take all of the remaining funds and transfer it to the liability with the lowest balance, perfectly executing the snowball method without you having to do a thing. We simply click save and now we're done. Just like that, your debt payoff and the snowball method with baby step number two is all set. Now that baby step number two is taken care of, let's move on to baby step number three. And as a reminder, baby step number three is about saving three to six months of your living expenses into another emergency fund. So just like last time, I'm gonna create another pod, which is just a simple sub account for us. We'll call this baby step three, three months living expenses. And again, we'll simply click into the rules out of our income and we can always delete the rules that have already completed, especially the debt if the debt is gone. But I can also just simply add a new rule. And here's what we're going to do. What we're going to do here is since we were doing $500 per pay into the debt payoff and now we're done with that, we're just going to simply delete that rule. And instead, we're going to transfer that same fixed amount of $500 per pay and put it into baby step number three. Now you can do that, or you can also use that top up feature again, where we would, instead of doing transferring a fixed amount of $500 into baby step number three, what we can do is we could use the top up. And again, all we need to do here is set the top limit of what we want. So in this case, we're gonna pretend that they're using $6,000 per month. So three months of living expenses would be $18,000. And here's how we do it, $18,000. And we're gonna simply add a limit of $500 per transfer. Now remember, it runs in order of the rules. So we don't want 100% going to personal checking because there'll be nothing left over for us to go to baby step number three. All we need to do is simply drag it up top 
And now we're guaranteeing that baby step number one is taking place and baby step number three is getting its $500 every single time we run this rule, which is every single time we get paid. Simply click save and just like that, you're done. Now, it will take a number of months to fill this thing up, but you don't have to think about those manual transfers each time. The system sequence is gonna take care of that all for you and you don't have to worry about getting too much money into it. Don't get me wrong, you could want to adjust it to get to six months of additional savings, which in this case would be 36,000, which is a really easy change. You just simply click on the rule. And in this case, we could change the 18,000 up to 36,000. Click save. And that's how easy it is to adjust. Now that step three is taken care of, let's take a look at step number four, where that involves saving 15% of your household income into your retirement savings. And let's do that right now. So the first step, and my favorite step is to create another pod because all of these baby steps, it's great to use these pods or these sub accounts that we can create and name whatever we would like and create all of the rules. Because in this case, we might need to be distributing it between a couple different investment accounts. You might at this point in time have a Roth IRA, you might have a brokerage account, and you might have a 401k. So by using a pod, it allows us to distribute that money in a much easier way. So here's what I'm going to do. We'll call this baby step four. Once we have that pod up and running, simply drag it to where we want to. And now we can start to create our rules. And again, it's just as simple as that. Clicking on the rule that already exists from our income. We're gonna to scroll to the bottom, add a new rule. And again, very simple. Transfer percentage of the remaining funds. In this case, we're gonna have 15% to baby step number four. But here's the key, right? If this is at the bottom, it is not going to run because we already have 100% going to our personal checking. So we're gonna to wanna to drag this up top. And now baby step number one's being taken care of. We've already wiped out all of our debt. So baby step two is done. Baby step three is taken care of as well because we've already saved up our six months in this case, $36,000 worth of living expenses. And then now 15% of our money is gonna be going to baby step number four. Everything else, 100% of the remaining funds are gonna be going to our checking account. Now, an important thing to keep in mind, if you are saving into your 401k already, that can count against or towards your 15% savings. So if you're already putting 5% or 10% into your 401k, you can count that towards it. It's always great to save more money. So if you can save an additional 15%, even better, but just make sure you keep that in mind because if you're an employee, and all of a sudden your money is already being taken out before it comes to you to go towards your 401k because that money's taken out pre-tax. Well, you want to take a look at how much money you're setting aside into your 401k so that you can make sure that whether you need to save 15%, 10%, maybe it's only 5% into your additional investment accounts. So in this case, I'm going to click save and we're going to have 15% going into this account. This is again, assuming that the person's not saving into a 401k or maybe a 401k is not available to them at the place that they work. Now, this is great, but again, this is just going into a bank account. So it's not really following the Dave Ramsey rules. We need to get this money into an investment account because it's not gonna appreciate in a bank account nearly as much as it can inside of the market investments that are typical for your 401k, your IRA or your brokerage account. And we're just gonna keep a simple rule right here. And we're gonna use the Roth IRA Vanguard that we already synced up. All we need to do here is simply create a rule, drag it over. We can do this either every single time money comes in or by date, entirely up to you. And what we need to do is transfer fixed amount to Vanguard. We'll click save and we're done. Doesn't matter what investment institution you use, the same rules apply. Now, here's the thing. We can only send money to that institution. You do need to go into your investment institution and let it know that money is going to be coming in because you need to set up the actual investments that it's going to be going into. So now that we have baby step number four taken care of, let's move on to step five, which is taking care and saving for your child's education. And here's what I'm going to do. So I'm actually just going to highlight all of these accounts and move them out of the way because they won't exist for us anymore. And all I did there was click and hold shift and it allows me to select all of the accounts in case I wanna free up and move some things around on my map. Remember, all of these are movable so you can design your map however you would like. Let's just clean this up a little bit. So in this case, we need to talk about children's education savings. And there's a lot of different options. I'm not going to give you advice on whether it's a 529 or a cover dollar, all of the different options that are out there, or just a traditional brokerage account. What I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to create a pod. 
because I have three kids. And so I wanna make sure that I'm evenly distributing out the money to their different accounts. So let's just call this baby step five, college funding and create that account. And here we go. Again, I could either simply click and drag a rule or I can just click on our existing rules to add to the list. Now let's click to add another rule. And for this baby step, we have a couple different options. We can set aside a fixed amount every single month or a percentage of our income, or we can define how much we want to eventually go into that account using the top up and simply limit the amount of money that is transferred into those 529s or college funding accounts every single time. In this case, let's just stick with the fixed amount. And let's say that we're able to save $300 every single time we get paid into baby step number five, which is college funding. But remember, the order of the rules is important. So we need to remember to drag this above the rule where everything else goes to our checking account. So now I'm going to click save again, and we have it all set up. What I would need to do now is simply connect my accounts, and I would look for investment accounts. And this is where you'll be able to find your 529s or your Coverdell accounts or whatever other investment account that you are using to save for your kid's education. If you don't have one, there's tons of great providers. You can see some of them right here. All you need to do is sign up for the education savings account or an investment account for that purpose. And once that account is created, then we can start assigning money to it the exact same way that we did with our Roth IRA earlier in baby step number four. And just remember, once you have that set up, come back to connect your account. And in just a few clicks, you'll be able to sync your existing account that you just created, and we'll be able to start sending money towards it from sequence. Now, we've accomplished baby steps one through five, and it's on to number six. Remember, baby step number six is about paying off your home early. And there's a couple different ways to do that. Let's take a look and let's add our mortgage in. I'm gonna connect the account, connect the liability account, and then you might need to choose between method and spin wheel, just simply depends on which bank you have your mortgage with, so you can try both. In this case, we have our mortgage, click, add, and there it is. Unfortunately, this person's pretty darn close to getting done with their mortgage. So now that I've added the mortgage, I need to add a pod for baby step six pay off the home and just like that we have it now we have a couple different options we can start to set money aside every single month to pay off our home we can put a remainder of everything if we know our living expenses and we have extra money left over every single month we can put all of that extra money towards paying off the home early it's going to be up to you but let me show you some of the most common ways that people do it so again, I'm gonna click on our existing rules. Now, let's imagine we have an extra $300 per month that we can set aside towards paying off our home early. Now, all of these rules are based around every single time we get paid. And this person's getting paid bi-weekly. So that means they're almost always gonna be paid two times per month. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to click to add a new rule. I'm gonna transfer a fixed amount of $150, because remember, they're getting paid every two weeks. And we're gonna be sending that to our baby step number six, and we are good to go. But here's the thing, if you wanna be extra safe, because there's 26 pay periods if you're paid bi-weekly each year, so there are a couple times where you're gonna get three pays per year. You can, as long as the budget's not too tight, you can just leave it as is, and then a few months, you're gonna have an extra $150 going towards the mortgage. But if you are really close and you wanna make sure it's exactly $300 per month, all you need to do is add that limit, put $300 per month. And now you guarantee that you're not gonna go more than $300 per month towards your mortgage. When I click save, that would save it, but again, I need to drag this rule up so that it's happening before it transfers everything else to my checking account. Click save and we're good to go. And remember, this is not actually going to the mortgage. It's just simply going into this bank account. Now, the way I've set it up is at the end of the year, I actually take this money and go to the bank and actually use that money to put 100% towards the principal of the mortgage. 
Some banks are better than others. My credit union is not great with technology, so trying to send it every single month was not working out with their system and was not putting it towards the principal. Because again, that's the key piece, right? So that's the whole point of paying off your mortgage early is that you're gonna save potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars in interest payments because you don't have the loan for the full 15, 20, 30 years. So for my bank, it's best I keep it like this. And then at the end of the year, after I have all of that extra money, I just simply go to the bank and say, this is how much money I want you to put towards the principal on our mortgage. Your bank might be better than mine. And in which case you can simply create a rule and you can trigger by date because again, these are due monthly. Let's say your mortgage is due on the 23rd of the month and you can transfer a hundred percent of this to your bank and just like that we're good to go now again i would recommend you talk to your bank ahead of time and you've got two different options either go into the bank afterwards because you're going to have this pot of money that you can put towards your mortgage or make sure that it works out with your bank and they understand that this money is to be applied directly to the principal and just like that we've accomplished baby step number six which is paying off your home early now You've done it. You've gotten through baby steps one, two, three, four, five, and six. You're on to baby step number seven, which is building your wealth and giving generously. That's the best place you can possibly be because now it's about continuing to up our investments so that we can either retire earlier or have more money to pass down to our children or have more money to be able to give away because that's the whole point of life, right? We're, we're saving money, but money is a tool. Money is a tool to buy time, to buy happiness, to help other people. And that's one of the key components to the baby step plan that Dave Ramsey created. And whether or not you follow Dave Ramsey's plan, giving is an amazing psychological benefit to help you not only help other people, but realize the power of what you can help others do. You've worked hard, you've amassed wealth, and now it's not only about helping your family, but helping other people as well. So in this case, we have a lot of options. We can continue to increase our investment amount, which would be as simple as clicking into our rule and then increasing it. In this case, we have 15% going towards our investments. We could always increase that to 25%. And we can create new pods where we can say baby step seven, give. And here's the cool thing. We've got baby step number seven, and now let's just click into our other rules. We're gonna add another one. And let's say this, let's actually edit this because right now we always have 100% of our remaining money going to our checking account. Let's say we figured out our balance and how much our monthly expenses are. So what we can do is we can actually transfer a fixed amount to our personal checking account. Let's say they're spending about $6,000 per month on their basic living expenses. Now again, they're getting paid bi-weekly and this is triggered every single time they get paid. So we're gonna say $3,000 or half of their monthly expenses since they're gonna be getting paid at least twice a month. And what I can do is up to $6,000 per month. Again, that limit tool is a great piece if you want to make sure that there's only a specific amount per transfer, per week, per month. So what we have is money flowing from baby step number one, already done. Baby step number two, already done. 25% of our money going into our investments, great. $300 per pay going into child education, great. We have $3,000 per pay going into our personal checking account. And now we can have 100% of the remainder going into baby step number seven, which is our give account. And you might not need to do 100%. What you could do instead is even say, 50% goes to our give and we can add another account and the remaining 50%, let's say goes to our college funding, just to make sure that we're maxing both of those pieces out. When I click save, now it's done. So every single time I get paid, money's going to investments, money's going to the checking account, money's going towards children's education and money's going towards our baby step number seven, which is our giving account. This is how you do it. And just like that, in just a few minutes, we set up the entire automation to run you through baby steps one through seven so that you don't have to think about it. 
Now, if you wanna build an even more powerful automations in sequence, there are really five core rules that we use to build everything you saw today. Without these rules, your automations might not work as smoothly as they could run, and you might run into some issues. But as you saw, this is pretty easy to do. So if you wanna learn more, click on the next video, and you're gonna see exactly how we set up those five core rules.